Hi everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Well, what time is it? It is, geez, almost quarter after 11. I was all ready to go live at 1029 and we got an unexpected guest. So, I decided to just hold off and uh, wait for the no disruptions and, and then share. Not to say that I'm not going to have disruptions further, but who knows. Good morning, Miss Shelley. It is a gorgeous day here in northern Idaho. Um, it was like 37 degrees this morning here, but it is warmed up and it is beautiful. I know it's going to be too hot in the sun to be out there with my equipment, so I just thought I would start here, show you the glorious day. This breeze just feels awesome. Let me gather the dogs. Come on, you come back in. Uh-oh, he's not going to hear me. Come on. Here, that's it. Thank you, old man. How are you guys today? I have some other goodies I want to share with you today. And then we'll go up to the she cave. Let me just spin this around. The mountain man has been busy. He manufactured that, uh, I believe that was Saturday, and put that in place. And then we will have a wood box down in the mud room that will enable us to have wood in the house and easily accessible. Good morning, Craig. And um, this is something that we are probably going to start uh, manufacturing and selling as well as this baby right here. Uh, we're going to do that together. He's going to be making the wood items and I am going to be doing the punch tin. Uh, we are feeling like God is definitely pushing us um, in the direction of uh, our own skills, if you will. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I'm going to spin this around, too, and share with you what we are doing for the winter. I have horseradish, care of Miss Tammy. I have our spearmint tea in the middle there, and I have a comfrey plant inside. Purpose of that is because um, we had put those all in the pots so that we could take them with us when we move. Not sure when we're moving, but don't want to lose that opportunity. I also have another uh, pot with some more of the tea um, in another corner, so we are keeping those uh, handy and um, comfrey leaves are really really useful so I'm thankful actually I have um, some uh, infused leaves going on right now and some tincture uh, of the comfrey plant a while but it's also super nice to have it on hand so I'm gonna spin this back around oh I want to show you one more thing you guys have seen my table those are the old Singer sewing machine legs that I um, have been carrying with me my whole life. Uh, so, well, since I'm in third grade, those were in the barn of the farmhouse that we lived in, and I, I claimed those and have been carrying them with me. And gosh, about hmm, 12 years ago, I made this table finally. <laughs> uh, I wanted to make a table out of it, and I really love this uh, butcher block top. I got this uh, back... Um, in Pennsylvania but I want to show you something I put my printer on here I had a printer and it was leaking ink and I didn't realize it and I stuck it on here and it saturated into the wood so that's been bothering me I really do like this table though so what I'm going to do is actually sand it down later today and I'm going to stain it this dark color I really am drawn to that dark color. So I'm going to stain it and um, put some coatings on it and really um, simple pleasure, simple pleasure. I also want to show you something else. Can you see that? I thought this was really cool. The mountain boy and I got a chance to go out yesterday and spend the day together. Um, as many of you know, he's going to be leaving soon. And we found this at the movie theater. We went to the discount movies yesterday. Um, Austin had a coupon to redeem. That's what I give him for Christmas. But somebody put this there so that it was noticeable and it's a 2019 a CDA Rocks and it says Jesus is born and it's a little snowman. I love snowman and um, I just thought that was really cool. Uh, what a great way to catch people's eyes. I'm going to spin this around. There we go. Okay, so we're going to head up the stairs here, 
and settle in. Let me see. We've got some comments on here, but ah, just I'm feeling very renewed. I'm not 100%, um, but I am renewed. I'm renewed in that regard. I'm not feeling 100% health-wise, but that will come. All right, let me see here how this is going to work. Oops. Oh, good. I think this is going to work all right. Okay. Craig, I got rid of my chair. We needed some extra money, so I sold my chair the other day. And can you guys, it's kind of glary. I had the window behind me, but I thought I would sit here in the breeze. Good morning, Miss Diana. Good morning, Janet. Tammy says, I am out in the garden pulling up tomatoes. Nice. Uh, we were gifted by t with tomatoes and peppers um, this weekend. Our friends Gudrun and George came out and they brought us yummy, scrumptious goodies. I have a lot of habaneros and scorpion peppers and I am going to utilize those and um, make some more hot sauce. Uh, let's see here. The wood rack will be a big thing to sell. I am sure people will love a Treyer original. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, God is definitely leading the way. Way do you guys hear this? Um, we've been praying that God confirms everything that we're doing. And I've also shared with you that the mountain man and I have asked God to share the same thing with us separately that we come together and we know that we are on the right path what a great confirmation and i shared with you last week how he did that with hebrews 6 15 which is waiting and um it was really weird we showed the house on saturday um i had gone out for a mountain bike ride and came back to a message we had an hour uh, to be prepared for people showing up, which was fine. You know, we have no clutter anymore, so it's not like I had much to do. But it was just, it caught us both off guard. Uh, I think, one, because we just feel like God has told us to wait and we're going to be staying here for now, uh, you know. And then, um, two, it was just, it was, it was, just, it just threw us off kilter. So that was interesting, um, but God has told us to wait, so we are, we are waiting, and um, we're selling and getting rid of everything that we don't need that's in the way. We had some big stuff outside that needed to go, and some of his um, construction equipment that we don't use on a regular basis that we, won't, we don't feel we'll be using anytime soon, and we sold the big generator, or uh, well, generator and welder. So we were able to purchase propane. We were, we've been able to get some firewood. We need to go out as a family and get some more. Um, we were able to get some food for our, um, our food cache. And uh, with the sales that we've had recently, I sold my chair and I sold uh, the table, my standing table, my standing desk. And uh, I was, we were able to get our hunting licenses, which will open up next Thursday. So next Wednesday, you'll probably see me all camoed up and ready and anxious to go. Um, but God is providing. God is providing one step at a time. And it's just really amazing. And it's really important to keep the faith no matter what we are going through, whether we are going through good times or bad times. Um, but another confirmation we got yesterday, and this is really crazy. Austin has been studying all year for a scalar position with the state, which I had shared with you guys. And that's basically measuring the logs um, and finding out their value. And uh, he was studying to take a test October 1st, and then the schooling opportunity came about. And uh, we felt God was leading us in that direction, but we asked for confirmation. This is the weirdest thing, but the fellow that was helping him study and train for that um, contacted me yesterday to share with me that the October 1st um, test was canceled. So <laughs> I just, I love how God works. You know, you, you gotta, we've got to all learn to ask him specifically what we need and he will, he will show us, he will answer us. And what a great confirmation to know we're on the right path, to know we are following his will. And so many amazing things are just lining up and it's, 
it's just awesome. It's awesome. And one of the biggest things I did for myself over the last two weeks is that I just stepped away. I unplugged and I plugged in. And when I say that, I mean that I unplugged from everything. I haven't touched my iPad. I was on my computer only for some very specific client needs. Um, I did have my phone with me, but I was more so listening to um, inspirational podcasts and, and uh, really um, diving deep into God's Word. So that's how I was plugging in. And it was very necessary. I, this has been... A really this has been a really tough year for us it's been hard but it's also been amazing and it's also been good but when you learn and as you go through these processes and you learn what is important and and how to go about um, making lives easier for ourselves decluttering and uh, um, strengthening as a family uh, pulling into God, using God's word as our uh, foothold, um, but separating ourselves from the world. And, and some of you may not be able to, you know, step away from the world. You've got to get out and you've got to work and, and you've got to do things. But um, it's important to fast not only from food and beverages, but to fast from things that pull our attention and pull our attention in not such a good way. And my reason for stepping back and away from things was because I hit such a place of overwhelm. And part of that was because of my health. Um, I want to share this with you guys. I told you about the uh, creatingbalancedhealth.com and that I had done a saliva and a hair analysis test and that I was feeling like I was really drained, my adrenals were drained, like I was low in iodine and um, potassium and that my, lymph I, and my lymphatic system has been tanked since my surgery. Um, and my immune system as well, which I have been rebuilding, but I got my results back yesterday and it was like right on the nose. Um, I'll have to do a video and show you the results then that you can see them, but um, three of the biggest disruptors in my, uh, for my system is EMFs, mold, and there's another one. I just totally went blank on that but I want to highly encourage you guys to if you are in question of your health and you want an inexpensive way to get your body back on track and to see where you're at um, I also have several different hormones that are out of place um, because of my thyroid doing funny things um, with the lack of iodine and potassium and uh, my insulin levels were funny which is odd but I've got a lot going on still and and the stress that we've been under doesn't help matters any even though I make a great effort to keep my life de-stressed you know there's stress there especially with what we've been dealing with but um, and, and our biggest thing over the last couple months has been spiritual attacks and you know, that can cause great stress too until you discern what it is you're dealing with. But I want to encourage you guys to check out creatingbalancedhealth.com. There's a link below and you can use discount code TRAYER, wilderness, it's all one word. Um, and that is in the description below also. But you'll get a fantastic discount. It's very inexpensive. And when I got the thing back and I saw all the things that were going on and all the things that I had predicted were off, I was expecting like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for supplements, and I was very shocked to see it was two hundred and fifty-three dollars. So I'm going to be really happy to report back to you in the next week or two and let you know that God blessed me with that money to be able to purchase those because that's what I've asked for this morning. But um, this is all natural forms of healing, and um, they test your hair and uh, your saliva and can really get an amazing read on your entire body. What was also really crazy is I've told you guys multiple times that I have a lot of problems with my muscles and my skeletal system and that came up with a big red. Um, so, you know, this confirmed everything that I've been 
self-analyzing and also that I knew through uh, my protocols and my healing process. But I really want to encourage you guys to take a look at it because if you are having health issues, this is one very quick, easy, and amazing way to get your health back on track. Let me take a look here. You guys have been commenting. Diana says, I went to a job fair this morning and though I'm not thrilled with the position that is available, but I am trusting Father to do as will. If I am offered the job, I will take it. I was told there are already 86 applicants in for it just 36 hours after they posted it. Awesome. Well, we will be praying for that. That is fantastic. And Shelly says, I have backed away from my phone and computer in the last week or so. I still have to do online for work, but cutting back, um, had, cutting back had been so rejuvenating. I have been enjoying more knitting and reading. Awesome. Oh, we lost Tammy. She said that she lost me, and she's not sure if it's her or me. So hopefully she'll be able to get back on. Shelly says, we'll be praying for you. She's talking to Diana. Even if it does not look right. It might be more of a fit than you think. God always knows. And you know what? You know, sometimes, I mean, we all know a job description, um, what they give you as the job description isn't always necessarily what you end up doing. It starts out that way. So, and it would be a foot in and also add to your resume for current work. So it would be awesome. So we will be praying for you. Shelly also said, I have on that I have not touched for years. They take longer than knitting or crocheting. Oh, I have one that I have not touched for years. What, tell me, Shelly, what it was that you were, what you were doing. That's awesome though. Good, you're back. Okay, she's back, Tammy's back. I'll tell you what, stepping away is, is as good as decluttering in that we declutter our minds. My health was really messing with me because I was dealing with a lot of heavy metals. I've been dropping some pounds and as I am dropping the pounds I am stirring up toxins. And I didn't have any more of the binders um, that help bind all the toxins so that they don't reabsorb. And unfortunately I was dealing with quite a cluster of heavy metals and silicone and it was really just making me not feel well. And uh, metal, heavy metals just mess with your head. If anybody else out there has ever dealt with heavy metals, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They are just very disruptive to the system. Oh, cross-stitch projects. Awesome. Awesome, Shelly. I love cross-stitch. I haven't done that in years and years. I did that when my kids were little. Oh, okay. I didn't see that comment. Sometimes not all the comments show on here. So forgive me if I'm not commenting on the things you are saying. Um because they don't always all show up on here. So my apologies, but cool. And it sounds like you are also doing some cross stitch stuff, Diana. So that goodies okay let me see here bear with me we're just gonna change locations and hopefully flawlessly uh, yes Diana activated charcoal does bind but I have found that bentonite clay and facilium husk work better um, the bentonite clay binds better and uh, the facilium husk helps to have everything vacate the body. Um, I use Sones, S-O-N-N-E-S, -N -N -E and you can find both of those products by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Sones 7, and then again, treyerwilderness.com slash Sones 9. Um, they, are, they are fabulous. I actually used, hopefully that's better. I see my connections better. So, okay. Um, I, I used a European gel. It's very chalky. Um, that works 
second best, and then the activated charcoal. And that's my system. Everybody's systems are different. Um, I just found that the activated charcoal disrupted my my uh, my guts really bad. So I didn't I didn't use that as much as I have um, used the uh, bentonite clay. And the bentonite clay is actually a liquid bentonite, um, and and that works fabulous. So. Um, if you are trying to combat Lyme disease or um, detoxing like I am, uh, those are going to be avenues you want to definitely incorporate into things for yourself because um, without the binders, everything is kicked around in your system and just really, really, really causes great havoc. I forgot to show you guys something. Can you see that? That was the stone that I was working on last week that I shared with you. I found that in Wyoming while we were building a cabin for friends. And um, that is jade. Um, but that is my first piece of jewelry that I've made. Now that stone was little, so was, I couldn't make anything super fancy with it, but I really like that. And I really like the jade and the silver. So that's my first piece of jewelry. I am now moving on to um, some other different stones that I have and uh, we'll be sharing, sharing those with you. Oh, I just realized that my stuff did not sink for me. Oh, that sucks. I might have to wing this big time today because I had it all planned out that I was going to talk to you about renewal, which we are talking about. But I also wanted to talk to you about the importance of how the Holy Spirit plays a role in all of this. But how many of you unplug? I know Shelly said she has unplugged. And really, guys, I can't express enough the importance. You guys heard me talk about that a lot. Last year, I talked about the importance of unplugging. I know I talked about unplugging the beginning of the year. And my unplugging now was the best time I could have unplugged because I had so much stuff over this last month that really consumed my time and very much overwhelmed me and stressed my body because my body's not used to this pace anymore. I used to work this pace all the time. How, I don't know. But... I'm grateful to have slowed down. And one of the things that I've decided through this unplugging is that I'm going to do this once a month because it's really, really important to take that time and to absolutely step back, step away from things. Uh, we get so connected to our machines, we don't realize how much we get connected and, and feel obsessed with our, our chores and our things. and. One of the other things that really uh, helped me to unplug or caused me to unplug is that I've got a very short time with my boy before he's gone for almost two years. So I wanted to make the best of that and not have that something that's constantly being interrupted and uh, because that's more valuable to me than anything. Shelly says, I'm allergic to nickel, so I do not eat anything that are canned in tin cans. This may also affect heavy metal problems. I know you can most of your stuff, but be careful. Also, no grains and beans like kidneys are high in nickel. My heavy metals that I struggle with most are platinum. That was internal. And... Uh, I've never had any specific problems with nickel, but we don't do anything out of cans. Um, I didn't know that about the beans, though. That's pretty interesting. So they absorb the nickel from the ground, then, I imagine. But I didn't know that, so I'll keep that in mind. And really, my diet is pretty bland right now. I am doing that um, cabbage soup. That cabbage soup has been so good for my body. Um, I have dropped some weight with it, but the other thing that I found that is just fabulous with that r recipe is that I do not have the inflammation in my body like I did before. Um, I know I can't have wheats, wheat flour, white flour. Um, I am going to see if I can do einkorn flour right now, but I stay away from pretty much all those starches. Um, I do have brown rice every once in a while and uh, quinoa and uh, 
hemp seeds, things like that. But um, I've been pretty much just sticking with the soup. I've been eating um, nuts, a lot of walnuts and almonds and cashews. Um, but just trying to keep it light. Uh, when I'm detoxing like this, the more you intake when you're detoxing like this, the harder it is for your system to be able to process everything. So that's another reason why I've been keeping it light. Um, let me see. I don't do it regularly and not for a long enough time frame. Okay, with the um, unplugging. Yes, um, you know, you got to figure out what works best for you, but I really want to encourage people to take time to unplug. Shelly says, I had a couple games on my phone and I have erased them and I'm trying to just use my cell phone for texting and phone only except for Facebook Live. I have a hard time too with my phone. Um, but I did really good, like yesterday when we went out, I did not take my iPad. You know, Normally when I'm out, I take my iPad and my keyboard because if I get stuck in traffic, I have a lot of writing work to do, so I can then pull it out and, and do what I need to do. I do that when I'm with my family too sometimes because if we need to look something up while we're on the road or I need to send uh, a fax or something, I can actually do it through my phone, through my iPad, but I can also do everything through my phone for the most part. But yesterday, um, I had great resolve, great control. I looked at it just to see if the mountain man was messaging for anything and if there was anything of any importance, but I only took two times throughout the day that I checked that and just kept going about our day. And it's so nice because, you know, I watch people and we go to, like, if we go to town, you know, you see people sitting together somewhere, but they're not even talking. They're both on their phones and they're not paying attention to anybody. And I do have a lot on my phone. I use my phone for a lot of things. I use my phone um, to enable me to do everything I do. I can actually alter websites on my phone, both in a coding side of things and in a, on a web side of things. It's pretty crazy. Awesome at the same time if I'm in a pinch. But I like to go out and I like to, you know, uh, I went for a ride the other day. I like to go out hiking. Um, and I like to, I have my Bible app, I have um, my Evernote on there. So there's different things that I have on my phone to access um, so that I do have them at my fingertips. I don't do games, um, so hey, I don't do games, um, but I do have Elevate, which I will encourage you guys to try. I do that periodically. It's really good to challenge the brain and to get the brain uh, hyper-powered, if you will. And there is a free program available on there. When you sign up for free, it takes you to this place where you can, um, that you ha it looks like you have to sign up for one of their plans, but if you click on the one button, it allows you to take their free plan. And it's just it just takes you through several of the same types of tests, but it tests your brain and gets your brain really having to process things faster, um, which is really actually healthy for our brains. I do have that on my phone. But same like with the Mountain Boy, um, he got a phone so that when he's away, he can keep in touch, but we've kept it very limited on what's on it and everything. So. It's amazing how technology can just rob you, but that's awesome, Shelly, um, you know, that you're taking the time. And I know other people, like um, Dr. Eric Z said the same thing. He, he took everything off of his phone, that the only thing he does is text and use it as a phone so that he's not feeling the need or the, and it's really crazy. If you really pay attention to it, there is a very strong pool there for you to be on those machines sometimes a senseless need like that you don't even know why you're on it you're just on it I felt it already and I don't like I don't like that feeling but um, I've learned also that when you disconnect like that that it enables you to really hear the Holy Spirit and really feel and hear God's direction and 
I think that's really important in our lives because we get so pulled in so many different directions that we don't, and I've talked about this before, that you don't hear that still small voice. And that's the voice that we should be listening to. That is the voice that empowers us. That is the voice that keeps us going. And um, I found two really good things um, in regard to the Holy Spirit that I want to read to you today. Um, this is from the Word for You Today. Uh, I shared that with you guys. There is an app for that. And that is, this is also the one that our church has out available in a pamphlet form. Um, this says, knowing who's guiding you. And it's Galatians 5.16. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Dr. Charles Stanley says, during a photographic trip, my group had been traveling up a trail for almost three hours, and I began to have a funny feeling that we were going in the wrong direction. I asked the guide about it, and he assured me everything was fine. Not wanting, me, not wanting to be presumptuous, I, I kept walking. After a few minutes, I noticed that my sense of uneasiness persisted. In fact, it was growing stronger. I pulled out my compass and looked at the map. Sure enough, we were headed away from our intended destination. It took us close to an hour and a half to return to where we'd taken the incorrect turn. Sadly, this meant by the time we got to the site, our window for taking photographs was cut short. The event helped me realize two valuable lessons. First, when we sense an internal witness encouraging us to take a certain course of action, we should listen. Second, when you and I choose people to guide us. We must be certain they know the path ahead better than we do. Have you ever felt something alerting you to pay attention or pulling you in a particular direction? Perhaps you were listening to a sermon and you sensed God telling you to follow him in obedience. Or maybe you walked into a restaurant and were filled with dread as you should leave quickly. If you're a believer, most likely these feelings were the promptings of the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, warning you about danger, and encouraging you to submit to God's purposes. Today, let the Holy Spirit guide you. How many of you can relate to that? That, you know, you've really felt being prompted to either do something or not do something. That right there is an amazing, in my opinion, is such an amazing feeling to be able to feel God leading you and guiding you and directing you. Uh, and when we take the time to unplug and plug into him, this is what will transpire. This is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to hear. This is how you're going to feel. And the problem is we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day and the things that we've got going on in our technology that we actually lose sight of what God is trying to do in our lives. And I really felt that way and I just felt, I just was so very, very overwhelmed. I just had such a heavy, heavy feeling of overwhelm. And I don't end up in that place too often. And like I said, my health played a role in that, that between um, hormonal issues and heavy metals and my lymphatic system not functioning while I was going through all that, it was just like this toxic mess. But I know that other people feel this way. I, I know you guys can relate. I know that you experience it. And sometimes we just keep pushing through. And I was, but it felt so good to step away. And I felt bad because there were a lot of people reaching out to me. And I and forgive me if I didn't respond to you, um, but that was why. Um, I tried to respond to the stuff that was most important. And But the thing is, sometimes we just need to take care of ourselves. And sometimes by walking away from everything, you can come back with such a clear picture. Shelly said, I had the day off yesterday and had a list of things I needed to do within the next three weeks. I had a feeling I was not to leave them and get it all done yesterday. Awesome. And how did you do? Did you succeed with your list? I imagine you probably got most of it done if you did not get all of it done. And you know... 
It's really awesome because the mountain man and I get prompted in the same exact way and it's just so awesome. Because what was crazy is he made the, the um, firewood piece and we were sitting there that night and, and he said, I am really feeling super strong about having to just start making things. Like I need to get back into making things and I need to do videos. And I said, well, I'm glad to hear God is prompting you. And I said, what's really funny is I am feeling really driven to make things too. Like, it's just crazy. Like the jewelry and um, the baskets and uh, there's just so many different things. And what's really cool is several of the things that we both have the desire to make, we will both be working together to complete the piece so it will be unique pieces of art with both of our contributions to it and it's just so awesome I'm so very excited about it I love working with him uh, especially when he's doing his metal work but his woodwork too I mean oh my goodness I've showed you guys his hope chest before it's just amazing how his mind works and and what he's capable of so working beside him and watching him transform things is just incredible so we are probably going to start really heavily um, getting into that, especially once the mountain boy is um, off at school. Uh, then we will really be diving in and, and really be putting a push on uh, to utilize these next two months for Christmas preparation for others, you know, as far as making our items. Diana says, over the last 10 days or so, I have been struggling with overwhelm and overload. I've never really been a worrier, but it has been a struggle. I believe that. I know I know that feeling. Worry did not set in for me. I am, I'm so very blessed that fear and worry are not in my vocabulary anymore. But the weariness, I was just so worn out and overloaded and overwhelmed. And that can really wear you down. And... Um, Shelly says it's all done. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And you know what? God had a purpose in that. And God, God guides us to do things specifically. And, um, we are going to, um, switch over in the next couple weeks here to, um, something that's very big on my heart. Um, and there are some topics there that fall into this too. I'm probably going to give you guys some homework next week. Um, but it's crazy. There's so much stuff that goes on in our lives that I feel that we can, you know, talk about and, and present. But something that also came to mind, Diana, for me, while I was in that position, was realizing that something had a hold of me and that I was also under spiritual attack. So what's crazy is that we hit these places uh, through exhaustion, just you know, our our bodies are flesh. We are, you know, we are. Our physical work can really drain our bodies, and then you add mental stress and sometimes spiritual stress, or spiritual warfare. And you know, those things play a role in our day to day so much. You know, you can when you get to a point where you're really in tune, you can feel the disruption. Shelly says, I am feeling like, oh, no, wait, there we go. I am feeling like I am supposed to be making things to be sold also, like slippers, vests, not sure what exactly, but am listening to that. I know, it's really crazy. I don't know. Um, I've gotten my knitting stuff back out. I want to definitely make us socks. Um, but I'm just feeling... That creative urge is really awesome and for us it's really crazy we've been gifted work right now it this is kind of a funny thing I don't know the last three years have been very this has been very prevalent but this time of year I was just talking with Tammy Montana is gonna get hammered this weekend it's supposed to get hammered with snow we have snow in our forecast it's it's crazy so it's not long. When this when this season starts for us, it shifts like that. Well, I got a call yesterday for somebody who wants to build a massive pole barn and be under roof by winter. That's the fourth one we've gotten. And 
because it's he and I, there's no way we can take all those on. And we, we have committed to some work, but it's just kind of weird. We both have this unusual feeling like something's going to happen. The people are wonderful, but this time of year, it's really hard to get trusses for the roof. Um, five, six weeks to two months to get trusses in. We are in September right now, so you start heading into October, November, you're up on a roof with icy, snowy weather. That's just not, that's just not cool. So I think God is just pushing us in the direction that we need to go, and I, I love his hand in our lives. And the more we choose to listen to that small voice, I'll tell you guys, it, it's amazing. You guys have witnessed so much through our family this year and how God has prompted us and guided us. And that's why Saturday's show in the house, it was so, we were both just like, what? Because we we feel God telling us to wait. Now, this couple was definitely, like, it didn't feel right either. So, um we weren't surprised they didn't put an offer in and we didn't, you know, kind of offer them an opportunity, sorry, to put an offer in. Um, it just didn't feel right. And you know, you got to learn to discern that feeling. There is purpose in that feeling. And I can guarantee you, many of you will put your hand up right now and say, yep, there was a lot of times where I felt that feeling and I didn't listen to it and paid the price, right? I know I'm not alone. I know we're not alone. And we've done that enough in the last three years or experienced things enough in the last three years to know to just stop and listen. He, there's a reason. Um, I tell you that all the time when you get stuck in traffic or something. There is a reason. There's a reason that everything happens. And just like that, that um, scalar class for Austin not you know, being in existence anymore, Everything, everything happens for a reason. And when we see that kind of stuff, you know, it's pretty awesome when God gives us a confirmation that when we did listen and we chose to go the path that we felt he was leading us on, then he gives us a confirmation that the path we are on is the right path. It's just, it's definitely reason to celebrate. I celebrate greatly. Um, so I, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying and I hope you guys feel Feel, feel what I feel. And, and just renewal. Renewal is so important. When you're going through tough times, if you don't take time to renew yourself, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. You're going to end up in a bad place. And, and the same is true if you're going through a good place and you just keep pushing yourself. The same is true of being in tune with the Holy Spirit as it is being in tune with your body. Your body will tell you when it's had enough, and you need to learn to listen to that too. That was something I had to learn the hard way, unfortunately, but um, lesson learned. Here's another one for you guys. The power of the Holy Spirit. This is from, I'll tell you what this is from when I'm finished. Have you ever felt inadequate to live the Christian life? If so, then you are exactly where God wants you to be because you have discovered a vital truth. No one has the power in him or herself to live a holy life. We are all in the same boat, but there is someone else with us who has the power we need, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus gave his disciples the task of preaching the gospel to the entire world, they had absolutely no ability to carry it out. That's why he told them to wait until the Holy Spirit came. In the same way, if we hope to accomplish what God desires in our life, we need to live with full dependence on the third person of the Godhead. Good morning, Miss Helen. Oh, I'm so glad you joined me. You have been on my mind heavily, and I've been lifting up prayers for you. I hope you're doing well. The power of the Spirit is God's divine energy and authority released in believers' lives for the purpose of righteous living and fruitful service. When we walk in the Spirit, we're relying on His strength to accomplish God's will. As a result, we experience the following benefits. We may get tired, but we won't burn out. We'll trust God instead of trying to manipulate our circumstances. We may experience distress, but we won't become desperate. We won't become overwhelmed with discouragement or obstacles, knowing the Spirit within us will enable us to do what He's called us to accomplish. 
When we do God's work by His strength, in His way, and with His wisdom, we'll be blessed no matter what goes on around us. Walking in the Spirit doesn't mean life will be easy, but we never have to walk through it alone because our Helper is always with us. You know, it makes me think of Diana with her job, too. You know, Diana is kind of walking parallel with us. Her job is the same kind of situation as our house. And, you know, we are both stuck waiting on God's timing. And it can be very difficult to be in that place sometimes when you are waiting on God's timing and things don't look very pretty. They look grim. Um, but the more faithful we are to him, the more we seek him, and the more we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and not try to take over ourselves. That was a big message to the mountain man and I when we were told to wait. Because the story of... Woo, gosh, sorry. My dog is laying under my feet, and I don't know what he ate, but... Woo, sorry. <laughs> Woo, that caught my breath. Um, the mountain man and I were told to wait, and Hebrews 6.15 is where Abraham and Sarah um, take things into their own hands, and she gives um, Abraham her... her uh, Oh gosh, I just went blank. But um, one of her helpers so that they could have a child. So they took matters into their own hands instead of waiting for God to work. And they stepped out of his will. And that was the message we, we got the other week. And it was so crazy that when I opened my devotional and it was talking about the same thing, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome stuff. But if we were to read and not communicate and, and we were to just go about our day and not really allow the Holy Spirit to really work in us, we would have missed that. And that's one thing that through our walk and through this crazy spot, regardless how crazy it is, we are seeking Him and His will first and trying our best to be unplugged and plug in. And one of my greatest things, see, I'm the outside girl. I love being outdoors, but my jobs require me a lot to be inside with both my work, my writing, my web design, and my, you know, chores as a housewife. So I've got to make it a point and be very, um, strict with my schedule to make sure that I get my outside time because my outside time is my renewal a lot of the times is just stepping away from everything and and that's something that you guys need to remember to do um, and I'm glad to hear so many of you do take that time to unplug and to plug into him and also to listen to him speaking to you you know, and I hope that those of you that are watching um, the replay or um, are watching this on YouTube, you know, if you're not familiar with how to go about all this, um, I would be happy to share it with you. Um, if you guys have prayer requests, you can leave them in the comments below, both here and on YouTube, or um, you can email us at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. I have started rereading a book that I find to be really amazing. Um, it's called a, a Gospel Primer for Christians. And it's called Learning to See the Glories of God's Love. It's by Milton Vincent. And I will put a link later for this book. Um, I just really feel like God is nudging me to dive back into the gospel. And what's really unique about this book and the importance of this book is that a lot of times um, the gospel is shared with new Christians and, and non-believers. And then once it's shared, we kind of don't dive back into it because we feel, you know, that we, we have a good enough connection with God or we have heard the gospel. But what's unique with this book is it brings you back into the gospel and works us through it and reminds us 
of it, but it also enables us to share the gospel um, more wholeheartedly when we have the opportunity. Um, some of the girls here, I shared a podcast with them Saturday. I was just like reduced to tears. This thing was amazing. Talk about testimony after testimony. I'm going to share a link for that down below in a little bit. Um, I like listening to Todd White. Uh, his testimonies are just amazing. And uh, the one I happened to listen to was just fabulous. So I will, I will share that down below. If you are in need of something to really stir you up, and see how God is working in lives, um, you know, that would be something that you want to listen to. And if you just feel like you need renewal, I just really felt like it spoke to me um, in some ways. And it's really weird. This, this book was in the shed. I knew I had it, and I had to go dig out my books. And since we're looking like we're here for the winter, I dug out a bunch of my other books. That's why my bookshelf, if you notice, was more full of books again. I'm a book bug and I love being in my books. I love being led to my books and that's something else. That's why I'm talking about this. God leads me to things, podcasts, people, conversations with people, books, you know, websites. It's just amazing the things that cross my emails, cross our comments. Um, I just really, really feel, um, blessed that God is touching me in ways and, and leading me to these things. Um, but this really, between this and that podcast, it really touched me that we need to be very clear on and willing to not only share our testimonies and the gospel, but allow God to lead us. I told you guys before when we went to get the Mountain Boys, um, dirt bike, motorcycle in Montana a couple years back. The fella was in really bad physical shape and I felt so strongly led to t put my hands on him and pray for him. But the mountain man was talking to him and I really felt like the mountain man was going to do that. So I didn't and that still haunts me today. And as a matter of fact, it haunts me so much that I think I'm gonna email the man and just reach out to him because he's that heavy on my heart. When God prompts us to do things, there is so much reason and meaning for it. And that one specifically stands out to me because I could see how God could have turned things around for that man or used me for that man. And because he was very debilitated, he was in a lot of pain. What happened is one of the dirt bikes Austin got is in pieces. He got a full bike and then a bike in pieces. The man had taken the the one bike out, just finished it, didn't even have three miles on it, testing it out. He built them and uh, the deer ran out in front of him and he hit a tree head on and it just annihilated his back. So he rebuilt that bike so that he could sell it and then the pieces that were left, Austin would need to buy a frame and a front tire and he has everything else to build a second bike. But when I don't want to see you guys hit a point that I have, and I'm sure maybe you have already in your life where, you know, you've been prompted to do something and you, you didn't feel comfortable with it or you uh, just didn't follow through, uh, were afraid, and, and now you can ponder and think of those things. So when we are nudged by the Holy Spirit. It is so important to embrace those things because sometimes the things may not be for us or, you know, that situation, it could have very well been for me. It could have been to grow my abilities to share the gospel, to, to pray, to help others. I don't know. I won't know because I didn't take on that, that nudge that I should have. And I don't want you guys, there's, I, one thing I hate in life, and that is the regret of not doing something, you know, and that's why the mountain man and the mountain boy and I live the way we do. We embrace the feelings and the, and the desires we have so that we don't hit a point in our lives that we do have regret. But um, I hope that makes sense. I have a small gospel primer, which is a small 
book of this. The first person who tells me what their favorite thing is this time of year and um, how they would use this uh, can have it. I'll send it out to you. So leave a comment. And for those of you that are watching the replay, I'll do more of these and I'll do it in a different way so that you have an opportunity to get in on that. But I thought I would offer this out there to somebody because it's a really neat book and I'm really grateful that I was prompted to get it back out of the out of the shed because it's definitely speaking to me. So what what are your favorite things to do this time of year? And what are your plans? How many of you are getting ready to hunt? How many of you are planning a winter garden? I have actually felt very prompted to pull the nasty thistles and weeds out of my garden and open up one of my beds and print plant some of the winter crops that we would normally plant. Um, worst case scenario, if someone decides to buy this now, they have some stuff they can forage out of the garden or harvest. But um, good morning, Miss April. Ah, all right, Diana. I will send that to you. Diana says she will give it to Jenny. Uh, good morning, Zach. Diana says, getting ready to make and can applesauce. Nice. Are the apples there on the place? I know you had plums, but refresh my memory. Were there apples too? That was something else we were blessed with. Um, our friends brought us some apples as well, and they're like this big. They're massive. Um, and there's a, a local fella that uh, is typically about 45 minutes to an hour away from us, but he's able to get honey crisps from the local orchard and he sells them and those are the best apples and he sells them very inexpensively so I am hoping to connect with him on our next trek either to town for materials or taking Austin to school but we haven't heard yet he's like dying he's very anxious um, they said it could take a couple weeks till they uh, till we hear back for his admission date but um, he's excited, very excited. Tammy says, can't wait to fire up the cook stove. I bet we have had some fires in the wood stove. Um, we've just been burning some of the white fur to kind of uh, kill the chill. Um, but it, it just looks so nice and feels so good. And we were able to have a campfire or a, a fire outside. Finally, it rained on, I think it was Friday. And because we got rain, there was moisture, so we were able to have a fire outside, which felt just so incredibly wonderful. I, I thrive off of that. Diana says, no apples. We'll have to go further north. We like wine sap and, and Braeburns. Nice. Um, what, my two favorites are Empires and the uh, ones I mentioned before, uh, the Honeycrisps. Empire is a cross between a Macintosh and a Red Delicious, and I don't know if they are out here. Um, we used to get those back east. They are such a nice, nice apple. But the ones you're mentioning are really, really good for applesauce. But for eating, oh my goodness, those are my two favorite. And I love, I love apples. I love pumpkins. My girlfriend and I back east, this time of year, we would go out together and find pumpkins. And we both have these weird fetishes for the really cool stems so the ones that are curly or have something extra hanging off of it still and uh, we'd always find these really unique pumpkins just not your orange jack-o-lantern pumpkin but the white ones and the uh, like sage green and it was just fun it was a trip she was uh, such a dear friend and such a great spirit and uh, miss her dearly but that was one of my favorite things to do and uh, November I start planting paper whites I used to plant them in old scrapple tins, and I don't know if you folks know what scrapple is, but it's the other gray meat. It's a meat they make back east from uh, pork scraps and stuff, and uh, it's really good if it's fried up really thin and you can put apple butter on it or um, uh, people put different things, but apple butter is my favorite thing on it. But the tins are like almost like a bread pan, but instead of it being rounded, they have the tight corners. And I plant paper white bulbs in there, and then I put a little bit of moss on the top, and then they start pushing up the end of November, beginning of December. I do that also with the um, 
oh, not poinsettias, but the, uh, my brain is not working today, so forgive me. But I do that with a couple different bulbs. I haven't done that in a couple years because I haven't been able to afford to do it, but that is something else I do, kind of a tradition. And then I gift those, so then when you gift it to them, the bulbs are started, but they start to bloom right around, you know, Christmas, beginning of December, Christmas time, so it's something fun. I am waiting for pumpkins. I want to dehydrate and make pumpkin powder. Awesome. Awesome. All those powders are so good for smoothies during the winter. I'm so excited. Tammy sent me a really nice uh, superfood blend, and um, I had some uh, moringa powder, and I made my smoothie this morning. Um, it's so nice to be able to get like a powerful boost with smoothies, and I know you ladies do that, and I know you for sure, Shelly, are, are making all your powders. Did you do the red beet powder? I know you talked about it. And did you get all your other things accomplished that you, your canning that you had on the list, or do you have stuff in the freezer to be canned later? But this is, this is just such an awesome time of year. When I went for my bike ride on Saturday, that was just so renewing. It's just so nice out here. And I'm really anxious. I love being out hunting and love just either watching things come alive in the morning or watching everything go dark at night and you walk back in the dark. It's just, I don't know, it's just amazing. Plus the opportunity to fill our freezer. That's always good. Not a fan of pumpkin, but when we had chickens, they loved it. Oh, I believe that. Nice. Yeah, pumpkin is one of my favorite. Pumpkin and cranberry. I don't know why. And then the smell of cinnamon this time of year. I like to put uh, cinnamon sticks on my wood stove in a kettle with water and just let it simmer all day. That just smells so amazing. But I don't want to keep you guys any longer today. I know you guys are busy. Diana, I will mail this out to you. That will be really good for Jenny. And it's a nice size. I'm going to see how many more of these I can get my hands on. Um, I had gotten a couple extras from the church. Um, this is just basically a shortened version of this bigger book. But... Um, again, I will put the link in for that, and uh, like I said, I will be trying to get more of these in your hands because this is a really interesting, really good way to renew ourselves also. I got my beets done, left them as chips until I need to powder them. Oh, very smart, very smart. Do you put salt on them when you do them as chips, and do you eat them like a physical chip, or do you just um, do them plain? I need to try, well, we would like to build a solar dehydrator because the dehydrators are hard to run because you have to run them for so many hours. And um, once it gets, the sun goes down, uh, it's just something that we have to shut off. It pulls too much power because it's using heat. So if we were able to get a solar dehydrator going, that would be so much more beneficial for us. I've used these solar ovens to do it. But I've also not been in a position where I've had a lot of stuff to dehydrate either this year. Um, so I am living vicariously through you all. I got my pickled beets, ketchup, and chili sauce. Oh, you got more. Okay, cool. Yeah, you were busy, girl. You were way busy. I just did them plain so I can use them in smoothies. Nice. Nice. I do, I do a pinch of sea salt, um, either Himalayan or the Celtic sea salt. In my smoothies too um, just for the benefits of that uh, I put all kinds of stuff in my smoothies we ought, ought to do a smoothie recipe uh, live video I made my own solar dehydrator okay girl you need to share so is that what you've been using to do all your dehydrating good morning Charles or afternoon I'm not sure what it is anymore it is afternoon Oh, and I said I would share with you what that devotional came from. That particular devotional is from, um, that's not funny, it doesn't say. I'll have to report back on that. I don't know what the actual, it's Charles Stanley is, is what I, what I'm utilizing, but I'm not sure what it is actually called, so I'll report back on that. Um, but also guys, if you have good stuff to share, you know, that you're doing unique things like Shelly made her solar dehydrator and I know she does all kinds of smoothies. Tammy does smoothies. Diana says yes in capital letters. Please share those recipes. Smoothies are really healthy and they're a good way 
to get a good start um, and to nourish our bodies and also to give our digestive systems a break. You know, sometimes our digestive systems, especially when we're um, healing, um, need to break. Your body is able to heal so much better when it's not working so hard to digest heavy food, especially at nights. I did at the beginning a few years ago, but I'm working more now, so I have two dehydrators. I knew you got the one, so I wasn't sure, but that's awesome. That's awesome. Charles Stanley turned 87. I believe it. I believe it, but he is sharing such amazing information. It's also like that other fellow, uh, Derek Prince. I know he's a much older fella as well, but uh, he's God has blessed them greatly with knowledge. Oh, nice. Diana just said that she hopes Charles is doing well. That's awesome. And guys, if you need prayer, specific prayers, don't hesitate. I know Charles could use some extra prayers. Diana needs prayers for her opportunity with this job. There's a lot of other uh, applicants out there. So if this is God's will, help her pray that you know he opens that door for her. Shelly could use some prayers too. She has some health issues going on and could use prayers. Tammy could use some prayers. She's got some craziness going on in her place with lots of change like we do. And um, we certainly appreciate your prayers if you feel like lifting us in prayer. Um, God is continuing to work blessing upon blessing for us. Uh, we have some big things that need to sell. We are um, selling Austin's camper. It got cold. I have to share. He uh, came in this morning. He's like, it took a lot of shuffling of my blankets and all the blankets I had to stay warm this morning. It was 37 and his camper is not a four season. So um, he and, and the dog were curled up together and quite chilly. So that's what I'm doing next. Uh, we started his room the other day. We just about have it emptied and things ready to go in the shed and be dispersed down to the cabin with his things. So that he can move in here. He may move down to the cabin then, but the cabin needs to be rearranged and the chimney needs cleaned. So for now, so he doesn't turn into a popsicle, he's coming in here. And we will be selling his camper and his truck and his van. We're trying to sell those before he heads off to school so that that stuff is taken care of. And when he is uh, back from school in two to three years that he will have money to get himself a nice vehicle and either an apartment or some land to build a small cabin. So God is taking care of us, but if you could help us on those, those prayer fronts, that would be awesome. And um, you want to say hi? Or are you ah. just going to walk by? <laughs> he appears and disappears. But I'm going to say a prayer for us all, and if you have any other prayer requests, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below or private message me. Um, we've got tremendous prayer warriors here. Uh, I just want to give you a, a little update. Pat Kenny, who is going through cancer, is doing fabulous. He has multiple melanoma, which is non-curable. Um, but he is doing a new protocol, which is actually, instead of radiation and chemo, it is building the immune system so that the immune system fights the cancer. How cool is that? And how smart is that? I'm so excited to hear such a protocol is in place. His son-in-law has the same cancer. Um, Mark is only a couple years older than I am, and uh, he's doing really well. He is going through chemo right now. Um, he needed to go through chemo in order to uh, do bone marrow and stem cell. Uh, so uh, he is he's doing well. Then he will go into the next protocol, and then I believe he will be also utilizing the program that Pat is doing. But right now, in order to uh, control the cancer, that was the uh, protocol he chose. I'd also like you to continue to pray for Starry, or Stacy. Um, she, I mentioned her last week, if you uh, feel like tithing, uh, the link is still down below to help her on her journey. I told you about the Self-Reliant Roadshow coming. They actually blessed her with a class Class A, Class A motorhome. And she has a new home, new wheels, uh, a brand new bed. She has such pain in her back from the um, multiple melanoma that she, um, they blessed her with a brand new bed that suits her needs. And uh, 
really awesome. God is so good. God is using so many amazing people in this world to bless others and to help others. And through our prayers here and our community, we are seeing so many miracles worked and it is just fabulous. So keep praying for everybody. The prayer list is below. Good morning, Nikki and Sanford or afternoon. Um, but keep praying. The, their list is always growing and don't be afraid to pray for people when you're out and about. Pray for people when you're walking past them. Um, you know, our prayers are powerful and God is working so many miracles. And like I've told you many times, I love the seat I sit in. It's amazing because I get to see God's hand at work at not only in our lives, but in all of yours. And it is just, it's just an amazing gift, amazing gift. So I'm going to say a prayer quick. Papa, I just thank you for this beautiful, beautiful fall day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy on our family and all of those around us. I just ask that you lift everybody in need, strengthen them, renew them, heal them, bless them. May you provide great abundance to our community, not only financially, but through love and the building of our faith and the n nurturing that we all provide to one another. It's just amazing. I know how much I renew every Wednesday when we do this and I, I know that many of you share the same. And it's just, it's just awesome. And just feeling the presence of God, knowing when we need to unplug from the world and plug into Him and just take that time to re-strengthen, renew ourselves, and just regroup ourselves because honestly, the world has such a strong pull on us and pulling us in the wrong direction. And we don't hear that still small voice because there's so much noise. So just help everybody to discern and learn when they need to do that and to, to be willing to take that time. And also while they take that time to um, re-strengthen their faith and, and themselves. And Lord, just thank you for everyone that has joined us today. Just be with them, help them, be with all of our prayer requests and, and just guide everybody through their week and, and just strengthen them. And Lord, I thank you for what you're gonna do in all of our lives. And I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Okay guys, I'm gonna jump off of here quick because my stinky dog is now pacing the stairs. He needs to go out. So, love you guys. Have a great week. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching the replay. We love you all and stay tuned for more videos on our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of stuff coming your way. So take care. I will see you next week. God bless.